everyone, Melanie Menchinger here, illustrator for Gina K Designs. Today I have a new project for you with my newest set from Gina K Designs, Stately Flowers 10, and I'm going to show you how you can use alcohol markers to color this beautiful auric and grape image. So I've already colored one of them on the card that we're doing today just to save time, um, but I'll give you some tips about how to do that if you're going to be doing both and very minimal supplies, but you will be using a lot of markers. So I'm gonna be using the Spectrum Noir today, but you can of course substitute Copic or any other marker that you want. Love this particular flower. I wasn't familiar with it before. I don't think we have them here in Texas, but it produces these beautiful clusters of yellow flowers. And what's interesting about them, it starts out as a little tiny reddish purple bud, which then blooms into a really beautiful yellow flower and then turns into a reddish bluish purple berry. So they're, they're actually not grapes, even though it's called that, if it could be any more confusing. So anyway, I just thought that yellow and purple, they are complementary colors on the color wheel. So doing this color scheme and this layout, I thought would just be beautiful. I also love how this particular image kind of creates this triangle. So it's perfect for nesting into the corners of your mats. In in addition to the Stately Flowers 10 set, you're also going to need just some acrylic blocks for doing your stamping. I'm just using the Memento Tuxedo Black Pad today. The cardstock that we're using, I've got the Gina K Pure Luxury Wild Dandelion. I've got some of the Ivory, the Edible Eggplant, and then just some scraps that I cut for the greeting. And you'll use another scrap for the trim and I use the Allison die plate on that and a cuddle bug machine. So I'll show you some tips for that. I also chose one of the fussier ones to do that has these little cutout holes in it. And so for that, you can use a piercing tool like this Making Memories one, or you could even use just a little stick, some tweezers, you know, a straight pin, anything to get those out. I've also got just a little pair of scissors to cut that piece in half. And then your adhesive, just some um, tape adhesive and then some foam squares to pop up this layer. I've got some adhesive pearls for doing the embellishment. Okay, this is sounding a little bit more than minimal, like I said, sorry about that. And then the markers that we're going to be using today, I have got the CT1, CT4, and light yellow one, LY1. You could eliminate the light yellow one if you want just to um, save on your markers. So for all of these, you know, I'm using two or three shades, but you can go down to two if you want. For the leaves, I'm doing the CG1, the CG4, and the DG3. You could probably eliminate the CG1 color. And then for the flowers, I'm doing the CR2, the PL3, and the BP7, the, the purple ones rather. And then for the shadow, I'm using the IG4. You could also substitute the GG2 marker, but I can't find that one right now, so I picked the IG4. Okay, so to begin, we've got our little layer here to stamp. So I'm gonna stamp this in the opposite direction on that top corner. And I wanna show you an alternative layout because I've really been jo enjoying giving you the A and B choice. It just gives you more ideas, obviously, for your cards. So I'm just gonna pop that right into that corner there and I'm providing the measurements below. Now if you choose a larger mat, I chose to make this one a little bit shorter than I usually do for my A2 size cards because I had such a small greeting that I was framing in between. But if you, there would be a larger space in the middle if you wanted to put them further out or put them onto a single layer, you'd have more room in the middle for maybe framing up another image or a greeting that was several lines long. Just wanted to point that out. Okay, so let's begin by coloring our yellow. So I'm gonna start with the LY1. And I'm just gonna scribble this in all over the open yellow flowers. Now when you're coloring two of one image on a project, to save time, I would recommend that you do all of the yellow first, then all of the green on both, and then so on, rather than switching back and forth. That just saves a little time without having to go through all of your markers twice. But if you feel like you'll be more consistent in your coloring or you would just rather shade all of one and then the other, you can do that too. It just takes a little bit longer. 
and then I'm going to put just a tiny bit of the yellow at the tops of those where they're starting to change. Okay, now I'm going to do the deeper yellow. So this is the darkest one, the CT4. Oh, here's the cap. Someone had asked me about that. So I am just putting this in to all the areas where you see those contour lines for the shadows. I'm going to show you in a second how you can flip this layout. But you can color it either way. Whether it's portrait style or landscape style, you would still color it the same way. If you turn it though, it is going to affect where you put your shadow. So I'll show you that in a second. So I'm just adding it to the middle of these flowers and then the underside where the petal would cast a shadow onto it and then where they're curving under, tucking under. Just love coloring these. Okay, and then I'm just going to take this in between shade, the CT1. It's just a little bit more golden even though it looks like it's about as deep as that CT4. I'm just flicking this up onto the lighter one and it's just warming it up a little bit. But you could eliminate this marker or you could do all of the background, rather the, the fill-in shade, this lightest yellow with this marker if you prefer. Okay, now let's go ahead and put in our light green. So I'm going to use the CG1. And we just have a couple little leaves on this one. So we've got one right here, a stem here, and another one that's about to create a little bud. Okay. And then I'm going to put just a little bit of this green at the base where it's just being cupped by those little green leaves. Okay. Now let's use the CG4. Just going to add that in to make a little bit of shadow, just a touch to that little bud, and then again at the bottom, just a tiny bit. Okay, and this DG3, I might have actually don't think you need this one at all. I'm going to take this out of the list. I think I had this in my marker bucket from before. These are really similar colors. So I'm going to throw this one out, DG3. Just use the CG4 and the CG1. Okay, so I got rid of one marker there. Now I'm going to put on a little bit of this CR2. And it's going to turn kind of peachy when I put it over that yellow. And if you would like to see, you know, if these colors just don't seem to make sense to you, how you're going to have purple buds and then yellow flowers, I encourage you to go and Google Oregon grape and it's going to show you a lot of great ones to reference. That's what I used for mine. Okay, now I'm going to do some tip to tip coloring here. So I'm going to hold the CR2 in my dominant hand that I'm coloring with and I'm going to lift off some of this darker PL3. So I'll put it on this side. So this one is here, this one's here. So I'm just going to pull this off and I'm just going to brush this in and it's creating this really pretty fuchsia color there. But you want to you want to get some really dark color in there and that's going to really make this edible eggplant pop that you're pulling in on your layering. So I'm going to go ahead and just put in a little bit of this there where it's transitioning and then on these ones that are underneath and then I want to use just a little bit of that BP7 and this one is just really bright see that's just going to make it really pop so it can come out looking a little bit different every time if you want them a little bit darker or a little bit lighter Okay. All right, so that's all the coloring that we're doing on the flowers. The last thing that you want to do here is the shadow. Now let me show you an alternative layout. So this one we're going 
portrait style. If you want to do it landscape style, instead of, you're going to just change up your shadowing a little bit. So we're going to do it all on the underside. So this one would need to be at the bottom corner. And the reason for that is since I already put the shadow on, we're not used to seeing shadows above things in nature. We're used to the sun coming down and the shadows being below. And I actually saw a thing about horror films that they light things from below um, and it just makes them look very eerie and, and supernatural. So anyway, make sure that you have both of your shadows going on the underside. So I'm gonna go ahead and just trace under these flowers. And we're gonna layer that greeting right into the middle there. And that's really it. So all of it is just coloring, just, co I mean, excuse me, tracing just right along that underside there. Okay, now let's stamp our greeting. So I'm using the memento again for this. And then I'm gonna put this on the eggplant. So if you have a layout that works portrait style, if it's balanced, it should also work landscape style. So just try giving something a twist if you're wanting a different look. I'm going to pop this up on just a couple little pop dots. Okay, just like that. And then I'm going to put layer this on here. Okay, and so for this, I just wanted a little bit of this underneath each layer. So I'm cutting it in half, so you just have to cut out the one ribbon, and then I'm gonna cut it down the center, and then just layer it behind my mat. So I'm just put a little adhesive on each. So this one, if you can see here, I have already punched out all the little holes, but I left just a few on here so you can see how easy it is to pop them out. So you'll be able to tell which side is the top side because of the cutting. So you're just gonna flick out those little holes. And the probably the trickiest part is just getting that adhesive onto the narrower strip. Turn it this way, because it's always easier for me to roll towards myself. Hang on, actually I think it's probably easier for you to adhere this first and then just slide it behind. So hang on before I put on the adhesive on the other one. And then this way you'll get to see what it looks like without that trim. Just little details like this really add a lot to your card. Now another thing that you could do, you could also offset it like that or you could put it in the middle or offset it like that. Go ahead and do it this way. I think I'm just going to use one of my little, since I've already got the adhesive on, I'm just going to use one here, one side, so you can see how it looks with the symmetry or how it looks with just the one side. But see how pretty these little ones are with those little purple buds? I just love when an element repeats like that on a card. Just love it. All right, so you gotta tell me in your comments, A or B. Oh, I forgot the pearls. So pretty already, but if you wanna add just a little bit of bling, just put a little bit in the corners here. So I used a large one, and then you can do, just use one or two, however you wanna do these. However fancy you wanna make it. There's two and two more. So I always like to have my embellishments in different sizes like to have odd numbers on my cards and then to use more of more than one size. This is just a little more interesting. There we go. All right, so tell me in the comments, A or B. I hope you enjoyed this layout. I, I really love how both of these look. 
Thank you for watching today. I hope you will subscribe to my channel and to my blog, Hands, Head, and Heart. Please visit us at Gina K Designs and Stamp TV for more ideas and inspiration using all of our stamp sets and other great products that Gina offers. Thank you for watching today. God bless.